Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your girl Mitzi, and this is Mitzi. Let's think about it. Today, we are thinking about reincarnation. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is a great topic to talk about because this has literally been on my mind. I'm not going to lie. I kind of like blurted this in with another girl that came onto my show, and we were talking about our human genes and DNAs. And I brought it up how this is interesting. So now I have a lovely guest, Brownell, who is on the show, who's going to really help us think about this in a different way because is there reincarnation if they're not to be honest in my heart i feel like there is reincarnation but brunel when you hear those words what do you think about i love it of course i love i love talking about it i love thinking about it um you know as as you know i've got a podcast called life is a trip reincarnation stories and it's really about sharing these stories right and it's not an interview um like this format it's basically people writing stories and we record them and put them up so people can just listen to stories and one of the things that's really important about it is that they can be fictional or factual so that opens up a lot of ground, right? And with I found that sometimes the fictional stories actually open people's minds more than the nonfiction. Yeah. You know, so they just enjoy a story. You don't have to believe in time travel to enjoy back to the future, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, just to put that in context. So when I, when I talk about reincarnation, there's a lot of different interpretations and I like looking at the different ones. So I am not the kind of person who's going to box you into this is how it works and you have to believe what I'm saying and I can prove it to you. I'm more like, it could go here, here, here. I kind of have my own views. Um, but uh, to simplify, to answer your question, I just I think we have a soul and that soul existed before we were born and will exist after we die. So if you kind of look at that context and that soul chooses a body and becomes you. Right. Um, and there's a there's a really great there was an NPR uh, podcast episode where a little boy talks about going to the mommy and daddy store to pick out his parents, you know, like for the next lifetime. Mm -hmm. And so you could believe that within a, a more narrow framework and say, well, we just have one lifetime and that's how it works. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. you could just go, OK, one. But when you start looking at reincarnation, I just think it it opens up so many more possibilities. Um, nice. You know, you can go, well, wait a minute, I might have been a man or a woman or somewhere in between in another lifetime. I was probably a different race. I was probably a different, you know, nationality, a different religion. And when you start doing that, you start seeing where we're all alike and how much we all have in common, you know, and, and I just find that really, really beautiful. Um, it and, it, and, and the different lessons we have for each lifetime and the different experiences we go through and the more that we thought, think we're so unique and then we realize also but we're also so much more alike than we thought so i guess that's one way to answer that no i like it it's interesting because it really makes you think about it. if you have an open mind like myself and i'm hoping that the listeners that i do have i have an open mind you know so with the our open mind it it allows a whole bunch of possibilities to happen. You know what I'm saying? Because I've heard stories kind of like what you said. You know, I've, I've, I've talked to people who actually said that they chose their parents and they didn't realize they chose incorrectly or, you know what I mean? And things like that. And, you know, and it breaks my heart because it's like, man, you don't really know what you're choosing until you're already in it. You know what I'm saying? So, right. it, it, so it what was really, I thinking? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's kind of how she, how she explained it to me. Like, it was like, I knew I messed up at that exact moment. I see it in her eyes, but that's when I knew I had to do better for myself. And with everything that I've learned in my past lives, how could I not do better for myself now in this life? And she's done amazing things in this life. So it's amazing to think how, um, Oh, exactly what you just said, because the, the possibilities are, are endless, you know, and, and, and it, and it just, it stumps me because it's like, how can you not, not, not even think and just play with the thought of the what ifs, because there is many different avenues that you can really go with this. You know what I mean? It's not just animals because people, people have this big, strong, like, um, correlation with reincarnation and into animals but i feel like people forget the fact that we are souls we are spirit and it can happen to another being you know what i mean and i've heard stories and i've read articles you know i've read research papers where um where children were asked in between the ages between um 
four to to I think like 13 years old you know what could they remember and some of them can actually describe to you instances and families and like yes this was I, I was from Ireland or I was from Poland or I was from um Croatia you know what I mean things of all different places that now that they're in the states it's just like okay how does this how does this connect and that's what science wants to know and I think that's a beautiful thing because if science has got their ear into it then how can you not just play with the thought of mm, reincarnation so I guess it leads me to my question when did it when did it spark that interest for you? Like how young were you or or what was that moment for you where you were like, hmm, this is a thinker? <laughs> yeah, you know, because I, I grew up, um, you know, um, Protestant, you know, Episcopalian. So um, and it really wasn't necessarily it just wasn't part of what, you know, the doctrine that that I thought we were taught. Although now it's kind of funny because I look back at Christianity and I'm thinking, well, isn't really the whole foundation of Christianity that Jesus is coming back again? <laughs> like, I mean, you know, at some point you go, wait a minute, I think something is like not connecting there because it's kind mm -hmm. of obvious. I mean, it's not like, you know, he's going to manifest out of, um, you know, out of dirt or something. It's probably going to be reborn. Um, and so mm -hmm. that's kind of, I say that a little tongue in cheek because a lot of people believe different things. And as I said, I'm yeah. pretty open to it. Um, but it does, it, it does really make you, make you think about just so many possibilities and so many ways it can you you can live your life and 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 you're talking about science and you know Voltaire said you know why is it more surprising to believe we were born were born multiple times than just once like if you're talking about science one versus the other both sides have to make the argument to see if they're proved like you can't just say oh well I don't believe this so it's not true um, and then when you're talking about some of the other proofs, in fact, um, uh, I'm sure you're probably going to ask me about my novels that I'm launching. I've got a novel trilogy next month. And a big part of it, you know, it's kind of a spoiler alert, but a big part of it is, can it be proven? Like, it's mm -hmm. a mystery. It's a Da Vinci Code type outlander love story with the Da Vinci Code type mystery. And part of it is like, can it be proven? Mm -hmm. And um, and what can you remember? And maybe can you leave something from a previous lifetime for your next lifetime to find? Ooh, that's an interesting. Isn't that fun? Oh, that is. That is. Yeah. I love those type of. That's. Those are great ones. Oh, and you said it's coming out soon, or you? Yeah, have yeah. It's on pre. It's available for pre order now, and it's coming out in September seventeenth. So I don't know when the episode, but the first book you can get for ninety nine cents, and it's ba about a famous couple that I'm not going to tell you who, mm -hmm. um, but it's a famous <laughs> couple from history that mm -hmm. is reincarnated today to fulfill a prophecy that will change the world. Oh, so it's tracing dun, dun, five dun. different lifetimes. Yeah, five different lifetimes, and um, and there's I did a lot of solid research in terms of history and 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 making sure I integrated a lot of truth. In fact, my 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 tagline for my novels is "Lose yourself in the fiction, find yourself in the truth." Right. That's a. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. So yes, yeah, oh so the God. proof and, and and there is there is science that says, you know, everything in nature is resurrection. I mean, you know, nothing dies. I mean, like there's so much, you know, basic science that that has to at least suggest that it's a possibility. Yeah. Um, and exactly. it kind of to me, it makes more sense than thinking, oh, some people only get this kind of short life and then some people get this kind of life and this kind of life, and that's all we get. Like yeah. how does that how does that help us? Yeah, it makes it it it, it makes it more of um it gives it more reasoning, you know what I mean? And it gives you more look forward to like death isn't as scary as what people make it seem, you know what I mean? Because people are just terrified of dying or they feel so so much sorrow when someone dies, but it's like what happened if they didn't really die? What happened if they're just done with this life and they're possibly going to the next one? Just give it time. You know what I mean? Just just wait. I mean, you may not encounter them or you may encounter them because it's like sometimes I can like speak with people and connect with them in such a way where it's like I've I know your spirit from somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yes. like I like I've I've experienced this before, but not with this body. You know what I mean? Not with this frame, but this spirit. I I know. You know what I mean? And sometimes it's nice and refreshing, and oh, I could just give them a hug. And other times I'm like, mm, I gotta <laughs> stay away life. from you. You know what I mean? Like I gotta stay away from you. <laughs> yeah, you know. So it's really interesting, and I love the fact that you are writing about this 
because it makes it it makes people want to think about this you know what i mean and um i'm a type of person that loves anything that has to do with time travel and reincarnation and, and, and immortality and things like that because i feel like that those are interesting and because if you think about the spirit and reincarnation you're kind of basically immortal in a sense you yeah. know what i mean until Definitely. whatever is the last life when god decides to come i guess you know and then it's officially done you know what i mean but i guess at this moment it's like you're you're continuously evolving and that's the beauty of life like why wouldn't you want to like take advantage of that you know what I, mean? I mean that's i don't know that's how i see it Oh, I, I agree. In fact, that's really, you know, why I started the podcast. And I have a Facebook group called Life is a Trip Reincarnation Stories as well for people to share their stories. And the podcast is stories. And so, like, for example, um, and they're from all different writers around the world. So I want to celebrate these writers. So anybody listening or you yourself, if you've got a story you want to write, um, it's not an interview podcast. It's really just sharing stories um, and that they're they're read and recorded and put up on uh, for people just to listen to a story. And it's so much fun to see the power of these stories to change. And some of the writers like have written time travel, but they've never written reincarnation. All of a sudden they're like, oh, I've got the idea. Like, and th and there, there's uh, over a billion and a half people on the planet believe in reincarnation, you know, a 30% of Americans, but there's hardly any stories. So I just yeah. want more stories, you know, the more stories. And I actually pitched to Hollywood a TV series idea a few years ago and I outlined several hundred episodes. I mean, this is endless in terms of the kinds of stories that can be told. Yeah. You know, I mean, honest. you know, like I, I started outlining one. This is just totally, you know, spoiler one I haven't even written, but it's about um, a, a, a man. And actually, it was inspired by a guy that I used to see every day hiking up a mountain in, in Colorado. And he was always shirtless nine months of the year, even when it was cold. Right. And he looked like the topo, typical Greek god body and everything. And he seemed okay. so happy. Right. And he was just like this happy, happy person. And I went up to him and I said, well, you inspired a story. And I said, and, and I told him about the story. And the story was that in his previous lifetime, he was like a Stephen Hawking kind of frail, ill, you know, person. Oh, yeah. And the next life, he's like, I'm getting a good body next time. Like I am picking a good body. And I write it as a love story also because the woman who took care of him in this previous lifetime would be is is you know, nowhere near as attractive, right? We're so into looks and attraction and all this kind of stuff in, in this world. But this person, you look at them and say, that's an odd couple. Like, how did they belong together? But when you realize the previous lifetime, you know, and I, and I told him the story because the thing I loved about it was it wasn't like, oh, aren't I great? I got this great body. It was more like, isn't this great? I got this great body. <laughs> like, I'm just like loving this body because I haven't had this body before. And it's so great. I just love yeah. it. So he had this vibe around him that was just made it just joy, you know, and that's of, so funny. You know what yeah. I mean? And like, because if you think about it, he, he can like be like, oh, I'm so happy to have this body thinking that everybody remembers their last previous life talking to people like I'm so glad I have this body and then somebody uh, yeah. if you catch somebody in the wrong moment they're like did he just kill somebody for that <laughs> body oh you know what I mean like what is or like is he arrogant you know what I mean like what is going on right. like people don't know the, exactly <laughs> like we don't know what's going on like did he put a microchip in his head you know that's very interesting oh and about microchips how not to bring this up especially when this is now big talk of the thing about how well, I'm just going to put it in reference to the TV show that I seen it as because it was interesting, kind of like had a reincarnation. So there's a TV show called like The 100 or whatever. And I don't know if you've seen it it's on Netflix. Yeah, it's it's on actually the first really season, good. I think. Yeah. Oh, 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 you on the first, first season? Girl, it's good. Just <laughs> wait till you get towards the end and, and it's and it's finished. It's a, it's a really good series. Anyways, so there's a part towards the end and they basically if you have a certain blood you can transfer your your brain and your memories your thoughts your feelings and everything into this chip and then the next person who has that same blood gets that chip and then you continue to live in that next person you know what i mean and they call it their type of reincarnation and since now elon musk is now making that microchip and somebody actually has guinea pig themselves and offered themselves to use it because they're actually completely disabled from the shoulders down it's interesting to think how close we are to that point if we really want to accomplish immortality in a different way you know what i mean because in my mind we're already immortal in some way shape or form but at the same time it's like 
some people are seeking that immortality so much that they're willing to make a brain shift. I mean, what is your thoughts on that? I know I said a lot, but what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think the, the for me, the bigger question is that how does that affect your soul and your soul choices, mm. right? Because your soul's making these decisions. And if you're, if you're, you know, if, if you're making a decision at sort of a lower level, um, that is, has any kind of selfishness to it or any kind of, you know, not so nice stuff, like only the rich people can do that, or only these people can do that, or, you know, it's really, you know, you're stealing from somebody else in order to get to something else. Um, you know, because if you're putting your energy into another person, what about the soul that chose that body? I mean, are you taking that soul away? Because it's like cloning. If you could clone, you're you're not necessarily going to have the same soul in that body that you had before. So to me, that's the questions that I would write if I was writing, you know, because I write screenplays too. So if I was writing that series, I would probably, or movie, you know, I would probably get into, well, where, what's the soul issue about that? Um, but that's, but that's, a, that's a good point that you bring that up because I ha- it has been brought up and I have seen the difference, especially in cloning when um, there's a lot of controversial videos out there, obviously, you know, if you really want to get into the controversial world, all you got to do is really Google it and you can get it there, right? <laughs> so, um, Sometimes I like to dabble in it because the what ifs in that area is kind of amazing. So it's interesting because back to cloning, when somebody admitted that, yes, I'm a clone, this is my serial number, blah, 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 you could tell where their tone is not as if it's like a human emotion. You know what I mean? It's very monotone. It's very, it's like it has no spirit. It's just activate. It's basically like a robot, but a human form. You know what I mean? I mean, th- that's how I basically see it. And when you talked about the clone and the, and the chip is a person giving it up willingly do they lose their soul i would say yes because in the series that's what happened the the man that had to give up his soul for the for the person in the microchip he had to give up his family he had to give up his wife and his children and it was hard for them and it was hard for him and when once the chip was in him he had he had no recollection of who the, that those that those people were you know what i mean it was heartbreaking but it was even more sad is because the person in the microchip didn't didn't ever want that you know what i mean he never wanted this life he got it from somebody else who who wanted to keep him alive you know what i right. mean so once he got became into this person he was like what sucks is that not only do i I have to lose my life to prove a point. I lose this man's whole entire life and and well being for something that we both never asked for. And well, then right. and the person, you know what I'm like, saying? How selfish they could be to to think that they are superior than the other person exactly. who's, who's exactly body they over, right? It, um, yeah, you know, it's kind of like the movie Get Out too. Was a, a kind of a similar type of you know brain transfer thing. Um, yeah. So you know, I think I would I would go to the soul level and just ask you know, well, what where was the soul involved in that? Um, but, you know, and, 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 and there would be a big question. I mean, so there's some things that people are making decisions about that are, um, you know, that are super scary for the future of the planet. Right. Um, yeah. And, and this kind of entitlement situation. And again, if you realize that you've been everything and, and, you know, d- wealth doesn't make you happier. I mean, we know that, I mean, uh, you know, so why, and, and, stealing somebody's life from somebody um you know it's great science fiction i don't know um i, I guess yeah. i would go to the soul level um, yeah. i wanted to add something too when you're asking about stories and you're saying about how stories can change the world um i had kind of a personal story with a, a good friend of mine um diehard atheist right and mm-hmm. she loved reading my stories because i've written a lot of these metaphysical kind of stories and and some um, some reincarnations and she loved reading my stories even though like she's never going to believe in any of it right yeah yeah and then she gets a terminal illness uh-huh. and I, and I'm, I'm joking with her and I'm saying, well, you know, cause I don't have any fear of death. So I can talk about, you know, I, how long are we going to be here? Who knows? And we just accept yeah. that. So, but yeah. I could talk to her very frankly. And I said, I said, now when you go, you're going to have to come back and pr- tell me I was right. And she laughed and was like, no way, there's no truth. And she tried to send me videos about like this proof, like NDEs aren't, you know, real and they're made in the brain. I was like, no, I've got plenty of research to say that, no, they they actually do know for a fact it's not brain activity, you know, and an NDE and near death experience yeah. for those who don't know what that is. So anyway, so she gets she gets this illness. She gets very sick. She lives a lot longer than expected. 
And then she um, gets very close to succumbing to the illness um, this earlier this year. And I um, and her uh, best friend is very atheist. Her granddaughter was very atheist. And um, and so um, right before, you know, like right very, very close to the end, you know, I get a message. She's close to the end. I said, well, tell her what I said, that she has to come back and tell me I was right. And they said that was like her last smile right before Aww. she left. So then her friends come to me and say, okay, what's going on? I said, well, I'm going to keep an eye on. And I, at the time I was living in Tunisia, I've had this wild year this year and I was in Tunisia for a few months and living in this resort and they would have the, the leave the doors open and birds would fly into the cafeteria in and out of the cafeteria. So it was just like the birds were just, you know, co-mingling inside the cafeteria. Yeah. And a lot of times spirits can enter birds when you're talking about, um, you know, transmigration or, or, you know, I generally believe that, yes, we can have a vacation as a bird or whatever, but it's probably an evolution. So we might start out as something, but evolve to a higher level. But that's just my, you know, belief system. It's not necessarily something I improve. But anyway, but I do believe spirits come back as bird to visit us. I think that's a common, um, like, oh, well, I can I fly, you know, let's go fly and let's go visit. And so, and I'm waiting and I'm thinking she's really stubborn. So I know she's not going to come to me right away. And then I'm, um, and it, it was a very big resort. Got it for dirt cheap, by the way, really amazing place. But uh, so that was a long, long, long corridor for where the elevator to my room was versus the cafeteria. And one day I'm taking the elevator up and there was a feather. And I was like, if that, ele if that feather is moves closer to the elevator, um, when I get back down, I'm going to take that as, you know, as a beginning of a sign. And it was like, as soon as I went back down the elevator, it was like four feet, five feet closer. I mean, it was a pretty big move. Yeah. So I was like, okay. And then, um, I don't know if it's the next day or within a few days, but there was, uh, and I'm like, Birds, birds flying around the cafeteria is not a sign, right? This has got to be a bird looking me in the eye, making eye contact, standing, quack, staying, quack, yeah. <laughs> right? It's, I'm going to test it, right? Yeah. And and then there was a bird, and um, and it did exactly that. I'm like, okay, and I'm telling her granddaughter and her friend, like, I think this was Karen, and and then all of a sudden another bird comes with her. And I'm like, okay, this is really interesting. I think this is, you know, um, her husband had died many years earlier. I think they're reunited. I think they're both here. So her friends are like listening to me. And then, you know, I leave and I go way down the corridor where there are no birds, right? Down the way down the other corridor where my room is. And I take the elevator up and there are two birds on the inside, inside that corridor where there never are any birds and one waiting outside. And the one woman who was her best friend, her best friend's, uh, the, her husband had died within the last year as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I am sure that that is, Ed, uh, that, that is Karen and her husband, Ed. And I think that's your husband, um, uh, Bill. And what, I mean, the, the, of course, I don't have anything to prove anything. But mm -hmm. what I can tell you is the hope it gave them, the love it gave them, mm -hmm. even if it's not their belief system, for a moment they thought, well, maybe Maybe it is. Maybe it is them. Maybe they are there. Maybe she is has transcended, you know, and even if it was just for that moment to give them that kind of beautiful feeling, that's a gift. And that's what I want these stories to do. Right. That's what I think yeah. these stories can do is, you know, and I want to celebrate writers all over the world to be putting these stories out there and just enjoying them because you never know when that one moment can be something so beautiful. Exactly. I think that's a beautiful story to to share because let's be honest, you never you never know. And we need hope in this world. There's too much trauma that people are experiencing and they're still trying to recover from. So why not put out some hope? Yes, they, that person was an atheist. They didn't believe in the afterlife. They didn't believe in a, in a higher power. That's fine. But look what still happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? Look, the possibility of what ifs, you know what I mean? Like you said, you don't have the proof. You don't have no idea. There's no serial number, DNA tattoo saying, hi, my name's, you know what I mean? Whatever, you know, there's nothing of that sort. However, it's the possibility of, yes, there could be because I've, I've encountered somebody who, who lost their son and then their grandmother, like years and years apart. But one day she was out in the park and with her family and there goes two butterflies, orange butterflies flying around her and orange was the one was her son's favorite color and it was a beautiful moment and I'm like who's to say that's not them who's to say that's not their loved ones just visiting and, and and just 
just showing that they acknowledge you. You know what I mean? You don't know. And why take that away? You know what I mean? Why take that away from people? I think it's just selfish. Like if you want to be bitter and miserable, drink your own poison because not everybody here wants that. All right. You know, this is not that. <laughs> so oh, I'm so upset that time is catching up to us. So I have to ask you before we officially wrap up the show, what can be some lasting words of wisdom that you can leave us off with? Um, well, I, I, I think the, one of the threads that go through all my writing and all my stories, and hopefully you're going to give links to everything so people can get, um, some of my stories and I got some for free and everything, um, is the why that, you know, that, that whatever you're looking at, whatever you're trying to learn, whether exploring reincarnation or exploring, you know, an illness or, you know, anything that's going on in your life, if you can get to the why you can get to the healing. So trying to get to the why. Some people say, oh, it's not important to understand why. And I'm like, I think that's what it's all about is to get to the why. Yeah, I think that's nice. Why not visit the why? I think sometimes it's just so hard for people to acknowledge or accept that they rather just say, avoid the why and go around it. But then you still feel this empty feeling. You still feel like something's missing. You still feel like, no, what is going on? Well, maybe why don't you explore the why? You know what I mean? What's the worst that could happen? It's either yes or no, it's up and down. You know, it's, it's always that if, there's always that if. So why not explore? So that's that's a great point to keep us off to thinking. So thank you. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know more about <clears throat> If you would like to know more about Brunel, please check out my website. I have her lovely photo there. I have access to her website. And yes, there's a lot happening on her website in a good way. There's so much good content, so much great things to think about. And why not check out her podcast? I mean, why not hear these stories? You know, I mean, before we wrap up, one of the stories that still kills me about reincarnation was the fact that this woman had a son and told her son that she escaped death from the, this murderer. And the mur and the guy and the little boy was just like, "Yes, you were the one that got away, and I'm here to come back for you." And it's just like, you know what I mean? Like that just lives in my head rent free. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So it just makes you realize like you never, you never really know. I mean, there's countless even movies that play on this, on this idea. So it's just like continue on this thought of what if, continue on just this exploration because you know what? It doesn't hurt. It's just a what if factor. So with that being said, always, always, always keep thinking y'all. Bye.